Hi, I'm Eric, designer of Slaughter Ball. And in these first videos, I'm going to talk about the rules and components that you'll use when you play a scrimmage game of Slaughter Ball. Slaughter Ball has three ways to play, scrimmage, exhibition, and league rules. The scrimmage games are introductory and don't use all of the concepts in the game, such as skills, pro teams, mavericks, and support staff. So it makes it a bit easier to start up so you can get a handle on the basic rules such as moving and actions, chopping, passing, stuff like that. I also want to point out that all of the components that you see here are prototypes and do not represent the final quality of the game that will come in the box. For example, the miniatures here are from uh, printed from Shapeways and using their sturdier, less detailed material. And so the athletes that show up on your doorstep will be factory quality. All right, let's start by looking at some of the components. All right, here you can see the Slaughter Ball game board. It's going to be a double-sided board. And here what I'm showing you first is the hexagon. And as you can see, it's uh, got a lot of detail on the board. You've got uh, blood smears and some popcorn and pop cans and uh, you know a bunch of advertisements on the walls. And that's, that's all just a flavor. The actual stuff that you're going to interact with while you're playing, I'll show you in a minute. But anyway, this was the hexagon for three team games. And on the opposite side of the board that you get will be the octagon. And this is for two and fourteen games. So uh, the area in the middle here with all the spaces in it, that's called the pit. And that's where you're going to move your athletes around. You'll put your athletes on the board like this and there. And they'll move around in, in these spaces and go up and attack and throw the ball and such. And uh, when you get closer down here to starting spaces, these Orange spaces are where your team will be placed at the beginning of the game. So you would place your pieces out here on the six orange spaces in your side of the board. Just like that. And uh, well, then we've got the goals over here. These are the goals. On the octagon, there are four goal spaces and then two over there. Now, at the start of the game, you're going to put these door tokens over the goal spaces because the goals are going to be closed at the beginning of the game. And they don't open until one of your players moves across the center area here with the ball. And then all of the goals would be opened, and any team can score in any goal. All right. Then you've got your, also in your area, you've got the, oh, can you see that right there? You've got the re-entry spaces. That's where your athletes who are in the slaughter box or the penalty box, if they can come back into the game, they would come back into your entry space right there. And each team has an entry space there. You can see there and there. And uh, then these right here, these spaces marked with the numbers, there are eight of them on the octagon. Those are the launchers. That's where the ball comes out at the beginning of the game. It'll come out from a random launcher and scatter from there. Also, after each goal, it will scatter from uh, a launcher on the other side of the board. So if you were to score in this goal, then the ball would relaunch immediately from one of these three launchers on the other side of the pit. In the center of the pit, you have these darker spaces, and that is called the meat grinder. It's composed of basically uh, sharp, pointy steel tenderizers, and you take more damage there when you get hit, or you fall down, or you get chopped. And, but in order to open the goal, someone has to run into there with the ball to open the goal. So it's more dangerous to be in there, so you generally want to avoid it after you have opened the goals. Outside of the pit area, let me back up a little bit, in the four corners, you've got over here in this corner, you've got the round tracker, and you've got the token for tracking the rounds. And there's uh, six rounds, there's the launch off, then six rounds, and then you might have some overtime. 
if you have a tie score. And over here in the opposite corner, we've got the score tracker where you would take your, your score tokens and place them there when you score. And it goes up to 30. If your score goes above 30, you flip your token over and it says plus 30 on it. And then here in this corner, you have the slaughter box. That's where your injured players go. And if somebody gets injured, you just put them in there. And there's a card in the deck called uh, No Time to Bleed. And you can use that to get a player back into the game in a scrimmage game. For a exhibition and league rules, you can have uh, support staff physicians as well as some edge tokens that can help you heal. And in the opposite side over here, you've got the penalty box. You know, one, of you, one of your athletes fouls and somebody plays a penalty card on them, that's where they go. They would put over there and then there's some cards in the deck that would let you, in the strategy deck, that would let you get them out of the penalty box. And that is about it for the game board. All right, here you can see the plastic athletes that you'll use when playing a scrimmage game. The slaughter ball box comes with 52 plastic athletes altogether. But in a scrimmage game, each team is going to use only these six athletes. Now each team gets a butcher, two slashers, two cleavers, and a razor. And so the razor, have, these guys have the round bases, and those are the fast, quick, agile, best shooters, best catchers, and generally the highest scorers in the game. They're, they're pretty much the stars for throwing and shooting goals. They are the most fragile, however, and you should keep them away from conflict because they can get sent to the slaughterbox pretty easily. Next up, we have the cleavers, kind of a step towards being tougher. These guys have pentagonal bases. They are a little bit tougher than the razors, but not as good shots or as fast. They are kind of the mid-range scorers for the game, in the scrimmage game. After the cleavers, we've got the slashers. The slashers have hexagonal bases. And uh, they're, they're tough guys. They, they like to go up and hit people, and they can take the damage. Uh, they're not as good at scoring, though. Finally, what we've got here is the butchers. The butchers come with square bases, and these guys are uh, monsters on the field. I mean, they're basically just a big mountain of hurt. And they go around and hitting people and clobbering people, and, and uh, they can cause a lot of damage. They're pretty poor at handling the ball, and they're not very fast. And that's about it for the plastic pieces in a scrimmage game. Here we have the rest of the components that you'll use in a scrimmage game. There are some other components that I'm not showing you here that you'll use in an exhibition and lead game, and I'll get to those later, because in these videos, first videos, I'm just going to talk about scrimmage games. So you've got the door tokens for the goals, you've got some onslaught tokens, scoring tokens, the round tracker token. This right here lets you keep track of who is the first coach throughout the game. And this right here is the relaunch template for when you score a goal. The ball scatters out the other side of the board and this is what you use to figure out which launcher it comes out of. Then you've got your 20 dice over here and also, your strategy card deck, 70 cards here that you can use throughout the game, all sorts of interesting cards, you can play penalties on players who commit fouls, and you got the fumble card, and burst of speed lets you go a little bit faster, all manner of cards here that you can play throughout the game, and you're going to be drawing from this throughout the game. And that covers all of the components for a scrimmage game. Next up, I'll let you know how the rules work.